Oh, hi, it's James Van Osdell. I'm sitting here in my car in an alley getting ready to do Car Cone Carnate tonight. And I, I can't believe it took me this long. I've been doing this podcast for going on eight years. And to date, I've never really figured out the beverage situation. I've never really had good beverages as we eat and talk in my car. It's kind of embarrassing that I never quite figured it out. But it occurred to me, tonight's guest and I are going to be eating pizza in the car. It really, there's only one thing you should be drinking when you're eating pizza. It's beer. But this is a car-based podcast. We're in the car. It's Car Cone Carne. You can't drink beer in a car, obviously. But you can drink Heineken Zero. It's such a, again, I'm embarrassed. I can't believe, it's, can't believe it took me this long to come up with this very logical solution, very delicious solution. We're going to drink Heineken Zero in the car. That's what you do when you want to drink beer, but you don't want to drink alcohol for whatever reason. So I'm in the car getting ready to record Car Con Carne. I've got my Heineken Zero. We're ready to roll. It's Car Con Carne. This is like a TV commercial here, looking at the cheese <laughs> dripping. Uh, welcome to Car Cone Carney. I'm James Van Osdell. The show is brought to us this week by Siren Records in McHenry. We're recording this on a Friday night. We're recording this on Friday the 23rd? It's definitely a Friday. It's definitely a Friday. Anyway, the point is, tomorrow night at Siren Records in McHenry, Tijuana, Tijuana Hercules, performing live in the, sto- in the store. I love in-store performances. The world is snapping back into place. In-stores are a thing again. Uh, go check out Tijuana Hercules out at Siren Records. Or if you can't make it tomorrow night, just stop by whenever. Pick yourself up a cool new record or a cool old record or cassette. You still listen to cassettes? Yeah, when, I ha- when I have time yeah. and equipment and uh, D-cell batteries, yeah. Right. Hey, that's John Carruthers over there, the man behind Crust Fun Pizza, the man behind Pizza for Everyone. How's that for a bit? Thank you for bringing something for show and tell oh, today. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, did you, did you, your record store people know that I'm a McHenry uh, native? I don't know if they knew that. Mm-hmm. I knew that. Mm-hmm. It comes up a lot. McHenry, a proud McHenry native. I was just, yeah. I did a little like, oh, when you uh, said that. Have you ever done laps around the Volo Bog? Uh, we all have diarrhea from time to time, and that's not really what we're here to talk about. <laughs> all right, so before we get into this unbelievably cool book, Pizza for Everyone, uh, let's explain, let's re-explain Crust Fund Pizza, because there's a pizza sitting on your lap. Not only is there a pizza sitting on your lap, it is hot out of the oven, legitimately made minutes ago. I'm going to need skin grafts on my thighs. You will. That's but okay, though, because the underlying it. muscle is like, mm, <laughs> worth good. it. Right, so what is Crust Fund Pizza? Crust Fun Pizza is the world's shadiest pizza restaurant. Uh, I sell pies through my Instagram. All money goes directly to Chicago nonprofits in that I do not take any money. You give it to them and screenshot it to me. And then I fulfill pizza once a month to a bunch of lucky community-minded folks. That's it. So you, you've perfected it. During the pandemic, really, you perfected the art of started pizza. Started in August 2020. I had just finished my 12th month of doing this. Oh, my gosh. So you perfected You You were... You were we're an enthusiast. You, you're obviously a great cook. You've written a couple of cookbooks prior to this, um, but you really were driven to perfect Chicago thin crust pizza. Yeah, and I really appreciate you using the word, uh, you know, enthusiast as opposed to obsessive. <laughs> well, I mean, we all needed to throw ourselves into something. Yeah. During the pandemic, what what a cool thing! So you learned how to perfect the art of thin crust pizza you, you from the sauce to the crust to the the right ingredients and you've been making them i'm, I'm going to try to hold this up john for others of crust fun pizza i mean you yeah, know we pizza boxes and everything this you, is legit. you know this is legit because mm-hmm. look at the pizza box so because you're not a restaurant because you're not licensed as a restaurateur you just make these things and in exchange for the promise that someone will pledge to or donate to a, a laudable local charity you give them pizza yeah and you know Part of that is just that I don't want to handle any money myself. This is a right. money allergic thing. Part of it is we all saw that Tamale Guy got super Karen up in River North, and uh, <laughs> no one wants Karen's. that to happen to a like, Tamale, Tamale Guy's ten times the food maker I am, but like we're all he got we're super all aware. Karen'd. He got super Karen. <laughs> 
K- Karen summoned the other Karens, and then mm-hmm. it was like it was just, the coven. Yeah, it's like man, sure would hate if someone accidentally enjoyed a delicious tamale that wasn't paying taxes to the right people. <laughs> right, bunch of a holes. So you've been doing this since August. Mm-hmm. My God, I, I know it seems. I know I my I do the my God a lot too, because at this point you can't quit it. No, but I always said I wouldn't. This is this is very quickly becoming institutionalized. If if in I, oh, I like it. That's a good Repo Man soundtrack reference. I, I love suicidal tendencies <laughs> of that that first album of theirs. Holy crap! Yeah, the uh, but I honestly, the first few pizzas, those first few months sold out in like ten minutes, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of assumed if I ever stopped doing this, it would be by attrition. You know, mm-hmm. like people would be like, "All right, all right, we shut up. It. We know yeah. what you're doing." Mm-hmm. And they go in five minutes now, and I don't, I, I can't foresee a way out, which is great because people donate a whole lot of money to people. And I, I would ask if your family is tolerant or patient or has been patient through the process, but I know the answer, and we'll get to the book in a second. Yeah, I mean, yes, now, if you ever see me switch pickups to, uh, you know, like the townhouses behind the Walmart and McHenry, you'll know <laughs> that they stopped being a little tolerant. <laughs> All right, so you've got all kinds of different pizzas. You've got your 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 favorites. Uh, let, let me run down a, a few. Yeah, that were mentioned. Oh, you got notes, dude. Have you not done this with me before? Have you no, not I seen have. me do this before? I'm, I, I, you know, I'm always you surprised gotta be prepared for. I'm always a surprised when other people pay attention because I just drift through life like a cloud. I, there's nothing worse than doing an interview or a talk show, for that matter, and not remembering what you were going to say because it happens people's brains freeze they get in a moment and then they forget where they need to pivot to if i don't have notes well sure but i reckon it's people of note who object to that you're literally sitting in an alley with an alley pizza man i don't think there's a whole big bar to clear i, I take this seriously i know i know you do dude we're, we're like eight years into this podcast i'm saying it's nice seriously. i'm saying it's nice to get the royal treatment that's right Next to my recycling and garbage cans. Right. And this is a total... We are in a, an undisclosed Chicago alleyway right now. Redacted. Redacted. And this is a true Chicago alleyway. We're staring at a recycling bin, which has one of the trademark rat holes. Squirrel holes. Squirrel. Everyone thinks those rats. Those are squirrels. Rats can't climb like that. Good point. Yeah, they're serious about getting to that recycling. Squirrels are also more resourceful, which is how you know they hit a seam in the plastic. Yes, Yes, but this is, I mean, I lived actually not far from this undisclosed alley for many years. And I think the city had to replace two or three of my garbage cans in the time I spent there. You want to know the real problem is, like, I could call for that, and they would bring one fairly soon because we got a real good alderman. The problem is, like, the way we are oriented and redacted, uh, if we get one of those nice windstorm days, which are not infrequent here, mm-hmm. everyone down and up the block ends up with everyone else's right. garbage and recycling. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Do I want to call for my recycling? And then do I want to call for Dana's recycling down the road and Jim's recycling down the road? Like, I'm not going to be the recycling hole police. Like, let the squirrels have their fun. Let the squirrels have their fun. All right, so some of the different recipes. There's the kawabunga. My which- first, that was the special on my first menu. Thin sliced pepperoni and dill pickles. Mm-hmm. Pickles are having a moment. Oh, Everywhere yeah. you look, I, I went to Trader Joe's yesterday, and there are all kinds of chips, chip flavors with pickles. And you know, it, it's a thing that I might have had to sell in 2019, but they legalized it in 2020. No one's looking at pickles on pizza askance anymore. <laughs> Good point. More like scare. The no, what? more like scare cut. Scare cut. That's, that's see, it. Was that was the October okay, pizza? Okay. Okay. Oh, can I can I give your listeners a preview of what I have? I already have my name for October. This October's pizza. Do you mean Rocktober? Rocktober, yeah. right? But so my my scary pizza name is going to be Tom's Killing. Like oh, that's Tom, so local. Yeah. That's I love some more. Yeah, <laughs> I got a whole lot of interstate traffic here. <laughs> uh, all right, some more like scare cut. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Uh, sliced charred Fresno or sweet peppers, pickled red onion, mm-hmm. goat cheese, and mushrooms. That sounds amazing. That's it's a great vegetarian. Real nice. That sounds fantastic. Uh, crust the process. Again, wordplay. Uh, Philly roast pork, broccoli rob, and garlic. That sounds like a nice combination. That was really good. Just the straight up Philly roast pork. This was, I don't, we don't get political on this podcast, but this was oh. my love letter to a city that single-handedly flushed a big old racist down the toilet and it was so happy to see that play out on tv and i'm like look man we had our we for philly we had our problems in the 2010 stanley cup but i love you yeah. forever yeah they, they didn't lose with grace back of that one you know they haven't won with grace yet either so 
All right, so I, I want to talk about this book. I really do because it's mm-hmm. the coolest fucking thing I've read all year. You've got hot pizza you made. Oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> oh. Just so that the orders don't get confused in the John Carruthers kitchen, this one says JVO on the side. That's true. Well, you, I, I know you like, you know, I'm an, I'm, I'm an epic deli appreciator. I know you like stuff named after you. Oh, stop it. Yes, I, I do it all for vanity. <laughs> just sausage, though. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, not a sorry thing. So, so yeah. I, I, I'm honestly surprised that things have played out tonight the way they have. Because in launching Crust Fund Pizza, you've been very clear that you were doing these pizzas for charity. You're not doing these for friends. You're not making these just for anyone who asks. I tried to steer us to different locations. For mm-hmm. tonight's recording, I, I suggested, I don't know what I said, I suggested just, suggested just eating in the alley or hanging out in the alley. And you're like, you know what? I'll make a pizza. I will. I, well, I do it for people who don't ask. That's the real key. Uh, that's the secret. Yeah. You, know, you try to work the angle, get shut down every time. You don't try to work the angle, oh, and I got on my way. I, I, was, I was being very conscious of not asking you. And I'm like, well, we can go anywhere. I don't care. Yeah. We could have gone to Taco Bell again like we did that one time. Oh, man. I still dream about that chicken chalupa. It's not bad. It's not just not bad. I remember meeting you thinking, this is going to be horrifying. Mm-hmm. And then we were just sitting here, you know, like, glancing at each other. And it was like a movie moment where it was just like, wait, is this good? Uh-huh. Is something happening in my heart? Like, <laughs> But it was the taco. It wasn't you. No offense. All right, so let's open this. I, I, yeah. I, you made this from scratch. I don't want to let any of this go to waste. I've been following your journey. Nachos and Lager is your Instagram account. It sure is. Pop it open there. Okay. This is going to be a two-man job. It's a very large pizza. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Look at this. That's. I hope that... Wait, hold it. Wait, hang on. It's a shame that there's not an app that can let people smell fennel. I, oh, yes. Look at this. Oh, the, the sausage looks and smells perfect, John Carruthers of Crust Fun Pizza. Thank you. This is... I can't make my own... I mean, I could theoretically... I'm never going to make my own pepperoni, but sausage? I'm hang my head on it. All right. Oh, you brought napkins because this is not your first... It's my third rodeo. Uh, it's your fourth, counting. It is the fourth rodeo. You're counting right. Counting quarantine concurrent. No, I'm. I'm just when it was still you and Mike, and we went to the worst barbecue place mm-hmm. in the history of Chicago. I totally blanked that from my mind. All right, can I have a piece? We can have all the pieces. I'm sending the rest of the pizza home with you because I know oh, you got a growing boy. Yeah, who's, he's in college, but they're still growing at that age. I've got a story about that uh, for you later too. It's a good story. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you during the podcast. All right, look at this. This was made, really, minutes ago by John Carruthers in the Crust Fund Pizza Kitchen. He walked it out to this redacted alley. Redacted. Mm-hmm. I just want all your listeners to know, if they're if they're just doing this via audio, I'm people, I'm pouring buckets of sweat right now off my forehead, just trying not to eat all four corners. You all know how it is. We grew up with this pizza. Those corners oh, are... you can grab the corners. No. I, I'm a side guy. I'm a guest. Ooh, okay. Also, I have had several slices of pizza tonight. It was still Pizza Friday with the kids, you know? Oh, perfect. This is a lifestyle. It's not just for it's just not for glamour like this. So, again, as far as John Carruthers' bona fides go, we came to know him through Man BQ and mm-hmm. those two cookbooks. Uh, this is a guy who knows what he's doing. This is a guy who's also a tremendous writer. I, I, I think you're one of the funnier people I know in print, in media, period. <laughs> what, are we, what are we tasting here? Because this, there's a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of heat hidden underneath all this. I put a little bit of Aleppo pepper on it, right? And usually, so you get your crushed red chili flakes mm-hmm. on pizza. I didn't put that all over because it's a very personal thing. That's your mm-hmm. heat level. I agree. This is kind of a warm chili that has a lot of, like, fig and date and raisin flavors to it, almost like a dried fruit. And just a little bit of warmth that doesn't ever kind of tip over into, like, oh, it's too hot. The sausage is delicious. I mean, that's my preferred condiment, period. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad I looked out. I'm like, I've eaten pork with this guy, right? Because I try to be very so I, I, mm-hmm. very cognizant of people's diets. I've got a vegan pie, like I will, mm-hmm. for people who don't eat pork, sub out, you know, like turkey pepperoni or stuff like that, or beef pepperoni. Oh but I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I've eaten pork with dudes. So. <laughs> this pizza, I, I wouldn't say that just say, say this for the sake of saying it. This is outstanding. Let's talk about the crust, because I think that's one of the more memorable things about it. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's perfect. It's it's the right crispness. Thank you. So, it's flavored really well. I mean, it's it's a little sweet. It's, it's really good. I'm glad you like it. I so part of the reason I thought that that tavern style pizza was the thing to hone in on, like other pizzas like New Haven, you know, New York, Neapolitan, like that pizza is the event, mm-hmm. and it's great. 
And this pizza was always an event for us growing up, but it was the background color. Like, the event was the party. The event was getting together with friends. The event was watching a game. Mm -hmm. And, like, you just had the perfect pizza to do it. But it never took an 800-degree oven or having to seek out a place. Like, you can make this, and places are still making this in Chicago, with the same ovens they bought, you know, with the liquor license in 1952, you know? It's, I, it's, I, I went to La Rosa in Skokie, and I swear to God that oven has been there yeah. since the Honeymooners was on TV. Uh, Marie, Marie's is my place, you mm-hmm. know, just, just west on Lawrence from Redacted. <laughs> and uh, it's that place, the largest pizza they have is 14 inches. And I'm like, that's totally an equipment thing. Cause Marie's is a frozen in time gem yes. of a treasure. And you can totally see just the place play out over the years through like their menu options like no problem to have you know eight kinds of pasta but you know the pizza oven's only so wide that's what i think is exciting like this is eminently achievable for the home cook if you want to go ahead and get super obsessive and i wouldn't recommend it you don't want to be me but you can do it real real directly with enough um unhealthy habits this is not a pizza i would ever want to share with someone I would be unwilling to share this with people. So I'm going to step out then. Yeah. Uh, this is... <laughs> and because the crust is so thin and so light, I mean, I could I could tear through this. Okay. I, do you want a little insight on this? Like, uh-huh. this is... We could talk shop. Mm-hmm. I... Everyone uses mixers. Everyone, everyone, everyone uses mixers. Back when I was still making a lot of New York pizza, because I've pizzaed around the world mm-hmm. there, you know? Uh, I used to use a food processor to kind of kickstart just the yeast uptake. Mm-hmm and just kind of pop the lid off the containers I was fermenting in. And I do this with tavern pizza, so I make one, I can get about four of these crusts in the food processor at a time. I've run around them a couple at a time, you maybe like eight, you know, at a time. And do that, let it cold ferment. I do it for 72 hours on average. I've gone up to a week, I've gone up to just like a day, but you just give it a little time and then it rises up, you punch it back down, warm it up, punch it back down and then you just roll it out soup like this is this is not something you have to toss over your head you look i, I rolling pin this and i am sure. a not a professional i'm a semi-professional here and it, this is how you get this thing like the the real professional places use dough sheeters which is kind of how you make you know croissants and mm-hmm. pastries you just feed it right there it's a big ass pasta machine this is something anyone can do that's why i really fell in love with the style uh, again that warmth really aleppo chilies so you know let me give a shout out to the the spice house in evanston mm. they are not a sponsor but they have some of the freshest best chilies and i just i just buy them because they're amazing i get my cinnamon from there yeah that you know, good ceylon cinnamon mm-hmm. yeah my kids are going to be totally spoiled no <laughs> we doubt. make like their oatmeal and pancakes and it's like true ground ceylon cinnamon it's like eight dollars a jar i'm like damn i really raising the kids on some bougie pancakes <laughs> Let's talk about the cheese. It's not just straight mozzarella, right? It is. I use more Parmesan than your average bear. If I was a restaurant owner looking over a balance sheet, I might cut back on it. Mm-hmm. But it is real block grade of mozzarella. The secret is never, ever get any pre-rated pizza, uh, cheese if you really want a nice pizza. Right. It is aged mozzarella. Like I'll go between 24 and 36 months, depending on what's on sale, let's be honest. And uh, I full fat. Wisconsin low moisture mozzarella. Okay. And that is something that's a lot easier to find here in the Midwest than it would be on the coast. Oh yeah. But you can't go with the part skin because it, it forms that that you know shell. Mm-hmm. And you can't go with the pre-graded because it's got anti-caking agents and it forms the shell. Like you just gotta cut you gotta grate yourself some full fat, good Wisconsin mozzarella, and that's that's the secret. This is legit. Are you really not gonna have any? I, I'm, I've been eating from here. Um, no, please help yourself. All right, I am going to bring the rest of this home. You, for, for yeah, my, you just go nuts on it. For, for my, I want this is for you to enjoy. For my aging foodie, and I, I Con, want to talk about that in a consider second. Consider me, yeah, consider me your like wise and Italian grandmother, and that like, oh no, I don't want to eat. I want you, you know, to I, eat way I too much. I had considered you that even yeah. before this started. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess I shouldn't have appeared on the podcast first and just insisted on reading Streganona start to front, you know, start to finish. It's, it's a weird energy. I thought it was kind of an Andy Kaufman thing, but you know. All right. The one aspect we haven't really talked about is the sauce. Sauce is good. Sauce is cooked sauce in pretty much every tavern style pizza of note. Um, you know, you, you talk about some coastal pizza, and there's nothing wrong with this, but like a lot of recipes are just like you know, throw some spices in, 
hand crush the tomatoes or mill them or process them, whatever, and then boom, you got a good bright tomato sauce. I think that the sauce really hangs with tavern style and out punches its weight class because you get that good umami, you get that cooked sauce flavor. There's tomato paste, there's a lot of herbs, um, you know, it's something that you stir to not burn. I mean, it's almost like developing flavors over a pasta sauce over a little less time. And then I always make this ahead, cool it down and let the flavors just mingle and then I taste it again. And always like the most key ingredient in this thing is vinegar. Good really? vinegar. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Is that where the sweetness is coming from that I'm tasting? Probably a lot of it. Like, there's red wine vinegar, and that's finished with a little bit of sherry vinegar. But there's, like, umami in there, too. There's some fish sauce. There's some Marmite. There is, you know, just that long cook. Every time I've cooked with fish sauce, I made the mistake of smelling it first. That'll it'll steer you away from it. Yeah, you really just got to you gotta get right with it, you know? <laughs> and then you got to never, ever tell your family about it. My grandmother loves my pasta sauce so much, mm -hmm. and I'll never tell her for the rest of her life that the reason she likes it is because I back it up with fish sauce. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is amazing. How do you make this? I give her the recipe, but I leave one thing out because I know if I tell her, you know, it'll be like, you know, turning your back to Babylon, and then you do a pillar of salt. She'll totally turn into a pillar of salt. Now that you mentioned the Parmesan, I'm tasting it. You know how, like, when someone tells you to focus on something, mm -hmm. then you're finally able to identify. I just tasted it. It's just such a well-balanced flavor for I mean, a profile. Consider me your your uh, unbearable jazz critic friend, you know? I'm like, listen to the notes here. Wow. All right, let's cover that up. Okay. Let's protect that. I, I, I say I'm going to bring it home, which I will. So, no, I'm just but, excited. I'm excited that I can gesture more with my hands. You know, you've met me. I'm a very animated yes. talker. I, I talk with my hands all the time, too. Not all of that's going to make it home. I want to be clear. Oh, I have a, I have a, a repeat customer now who lives in um, Woodlawn, and he comes up with his wife, and they try to save it. And it hasn't made it to Lakeshore Drive yet. No, there's no way. That'd be irresponsible. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, so the book. Let's talk about the book. Because Let's do it. Currently on Kickstarter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can we preface this by saying that I find this as silly as, as anyone listening would find this silly? It's not silly because because of the charity angle. I mean, the pizza, the, the, the book, all great stuff, but you're doing this for local charities. And I think, especially emerging out of the past year, we all want to do right by each other. There's mm -hmm. an, an increased commitment to being right with the world. And that's what you're doing. So the, the Crust Fund Pizza thing, that's happening every month. Nachos and Lager is the Instagram. This book, this is, I am i can't believe how quickly you turned this around, to be honest with you. I really, I, I really like how you had to move the pizza napkins. That was a very organic <laughs> food show moment. It really is. Pizza for everyone. This book, I, I guess, explain, I know how it came about. Explain how it came about. Yeah, you kind of got some inside baseball because you're in it. But uh, this was, I don't know, you know, like you're a dad, you understand that when you have kids and there's a hobby and you become just obsessed with it, it's not even that you can do it all the time, but when you're not doing it, you want to think about it. You want to like mm -hmm. soak in it. You want to just absolutely drive your family insane with the way you want to just orbit around this idea. And that was this. Like, like say collecting records. Exactly. Uh -huh. And it's, it's just a compulsion thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my family used to make these, you know, the the comb bound Kinko's run cookbooks for our family. Reunion. I think every family has them sitting somewhere yeah. on a shelf. And it's like, you know, the, the church has made them, the mm -hmm. schools made them. Uh, and I was, I'm about to get just real deep here with just how insanely I thought of this, but like everything's digital now. Fundraising is gone past that. Mm -hmm. People don't print or offer these bindings anymore. You can't even get this something right. like this run off at what is now FedEx office. It's like extinct. Mm -hmm. And I was just sitting there one day and I'm like, you know, I you know, my background's a writer as an editor. And I'm like, I would really love, like I'm just sitting here staring at these old church found cookbooks. I still buy them from the garage sales in the neighborhood when I find them. And I'm like, wouldn't it be great if someone did that again? And like, why not for pizza, you know? Why not? Especially like, this started when we was coming up on fall and winter and I'm like, I know I can still make pizza, but like, I gotta shovel myself out. That's fewer pizzas every month. Mm -hmm. um, and, I'm okay as a pizza maker, I'm okay as a writer. My real skill is in bothering people. So I bothered people and said, hey, please be in this book. Okay, first of all, you didn't, some money you're, here. you're being self-effacing. You didn't bother anyone. You just said, hey, here's a cool well, idea. I bothered so many people. 
Uh, but the idea was it came together and I said, hey, you know, an essay on pizza, a recipe on pizza, a piece of art if you're an artist. And we are going to absolutely commit to just doing it supremely old school and sticking to our guns and making an actual church cookbook. Like, this is probably, if I'm being honest, the best church cookbook of the year because there are no other ones. Uh, this is fantastic. And it's a pizza book. It's essays about pizza. It's recipes. It's pizza adjacent recipes. And it's from some heavy hitters in Chicago food. Yeah. And some heavy hitters in Chicago. I mean, Peter Segal wrote an essay in here uh, basically encouraging us all to <laughs> forsake to forsake deep dish. He's a very, I mean, he's an East Coast guy. Uh, I mean, not for years, but he was born on the East Coast. Very East Coast point of view. Here's the hilarious thing. Everyone thinks this was like, you know, because it's, it's put in there and it says paid advertisement on the top. Everyone's like, oh, it's a very cheeky, self-effacing thing to do. You know, you get Peter Sagal to, you know, like uh, a famous... I, I say a Segal. famous I, I, <laughs> Sagal. Oh, no, I, I just assume you've seen him do Aikido on Tommy Lee Jones in the nineties. That's right. Uh, but you get hit, you know, oh, it's really cute that you like put that like an like a rich guy advertorial in the eighties in the New York Times mm-hmm. when everyone's like, you know, give Wall Street more money. This city is dying of crime. And uh, no, Peter Sagal just legitimately emailed me. I was like, I would like to buy an ad. And I'm like, what do you want to do? He's like, I, I could- would like to write a screed. And I'm like, okay. I didn't realize. I thought the ad was BS. He absolutely wrote me a check and mailed it to my house for that. That's amazing. Of all the people, of all the people in this book, one of the most famous people had to buy his way in. It's silly. I hope he doesn't hear this. I totally would have let that guy skate on that bill. I hope he doesn't hear it either because I totally biffed his last name, which is like, that's the kind of thing as a broadcaster will haunt me probably for another week or so. Oh, you should just, you should just, you know, pop, you should just do a drop in like how... Uh, I keep saying redacted, and uh-huh. I keep saying my address, but you've been Sagal. popping in just redacted, yeah, yeah and like it's it's flawless. You should just do that with him. So on Kickstarter, you've been crust, you've been crust funding, you've been crowdfunding. <laughs> been doing both. You can use that. You've been crowdfunding the second pressing of this book, and you hit your mark. I, it was a very modest goal, to be honest. I mean, you, that wasn't surprising. You hit it. Well, it was as enough quickly. for 150 copies. Uh, so you've last I checked, I think I checked right before I left here is at nine thousand ish, and it, I think the goal was twenty five hundred. Yeah, uh, twenty three hundred. It was well, I and you know block club. So I was selling out of these books like faster than I thought, and I just you know I just paid for the first run, but like I don't have another check because that was my money. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I you know block club was going to do a story. I'm like, oh, this is totally going to sell out. So I started a Kickstarter just to be like, okay, like. I got to work the next day. Yeah. Like, if the story goes, they told me the story's going to go up. I'm like, oh, the story goes up. Like, here, here's a Kickstarter. You just throw that link in. And if, like, people, if it says sold out on my site, just go over the Kickstarter. And so, like, I turned that on at, like, I don't know, it was like 9 o'clock at night or something. I went to bed. I got up, fed my kids, got on the bus, went to work. Before I got off the bus to go to work, that thing was fully funded. It was why it was less than 12 hours. That's awesome. And again, this is the charitable angle. It, this is a no brainer for Kickstarter. So, you get a copy of this book, and then know that all the all the overage. I mean, it's not going to to build a new addition on this house in this redacted neighborhood. Yeah, no. it's going to these charities. It is. I'm not allowed to say that on Kickstarter, but that is absolutely what I promised all the contributors, and will provide receipts for the backers. That's awesome. Although I don't think anyone would ever call you on that. I. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, I had originally had a line in there, like, and all the overage will go to these places, mm-hmm. and Kickstarter was like, no, 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 like products experiences and i'm like it's fair because you see those kickstarter horror stories and you're like you're right i would see where you just want to promise a thing right right not a whole ethos so let's talk about this book again you didn't bully anyone you didn't cajole anyone you just you just asked you asked me you said yeah just because i'm physically unable to bully anyone doesn't mean (laughs) i didn't have emotional levers to pull i find that very ableist of you james (laughs) i think it's a truth i mean you're a writer you read a lot um, the back 20% of any book, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, a uh, cookbook, a book like this, the most compelling content of the entire book. I'm on page one. <laughs> I knew you were going there. <laughs> I'm on page 170. Right? Right before the credits? One, not right before the credits. And with the best original, ro- with the best original illustration of the entire book. Uh, so the article, Nickelback Pizza still pretty good 
and look at that. There's a Chad Kruger made out of figures. I mean, this is some real like 1995 AOL stuff. Oh my god, I didn't realize it's no, yeah, that's like straight up like message board style. The word pizza. It's Chad Kruger's face made out of the word pizza. Yeah. Mm. I like this even more. Well, we're playing, yeah, we're playing chess with this thing. Holy crap. So, like I said, lots of major heavy hitters. Uh, our mutual friend Hot Doug wrote an essay in here. Mm-hmm. He was by for a pizza last night. Oh, really? He was. He has nothing else to do. He was no, pro- he's retired. He's. I have never seen someone happier to not work, and I absolutely applaud him for it. My most fervent wish is to not work one day. I, I love that. You know, I, we just or I just tried the sausage pizza you made, and I'm thinking this is fantastic. You share your secret. I mean, you, you put it out there. You, oh God, yeah. You you led other others to, or you're leading people down the path. I mean, James, if I can do it, there's nothing unattainable about it. This is I please accept these as the guidances of a thoroughly mediocre guy who Stop is it. very enthusiastic. But so your recipes in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I just had Chef Jason Gilmore of Cobra Lounge, who's been there from the beginning. I just had him on the show a couple nights ago. And it's funny, because we're talking about the different soups and Chicago-centric things he's made for Cobra, like the Italian beef soup and the hot dog soup. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, are you going to keep going down the Chicago road? Will there be like a shrimp de jong? He's like, well, I did a recipe for John Carruthers' Pizza for Everyone book. It's my mushroom de jong. Oh, my gosh. And, like, that's – you ask a guy like – you know, I used to ask Jason – I I asked a lot of people who I had never like met mm-hmm. or you know edited or cooked with or anything, but when I was asking Jason, I've cooked with Jason before, and I'm like, I'm asking a Chicago guy for a Chicago thing, and I know he's going to absolutely deliver, and he killed it. Have you been able to make it? Yeah, I, oh, I'm a big mushroom fan. I that love was it. one of the first ones. I didn't like, I didn't bon appetit test kitchen everything, but I'm like, Jason's is going in the hopper. Yeah, really. and I'm like, I was trying to I was trying to you know mix it up with the air fryer. Very good. nice. Uh, Natalie Slater, another former guest of Carcon Carne. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the city's, if not Midwest, most outspoken vegan that was a big. That was a big get. Yeah. I mean, that really was. For her to give, th- like, sh- three recipes, she's like, hey, I got three. Is that okay? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess I guess we can tolerate that low level of output. That was huge. I mean, she, you know, she's worked with Uptons, and, like, mm-hmm. I'm a huge Upton. I have a lot of vegan family members. Like, I might trafficking a lot of meat but like vegan cooking is some of the most exciting stuff happening in chicago yeah so she has a recipe in there for a vegan crust Mm -hmm. and what else three different vegan pizzas one's like a madras lentils one is a um a brunch pizza and i'm blanking on the third but like it's all with this great like short crusty biscuity pizza dough it's it's so good and like you know it's the ethos pizza for everyone we got vegan stuff in there joe joe hale who works for alarmist brewing but also has his own amazing vegan blog like vegan pizza puffs like yes I, yes this is, we're all throwing we are all the same we are pizza eaters we're not meat eaters and vegetable eaters we are pizza eaters and see this is kind of the the overarching thought behind the essay i wrote for the book and it's funny i i you can read the essay. You should uh, get the Kickstarter, sign up for the Kickstarter. Make sure you reserve your copy of the second pressing. The things I said in that essay were echoed throughout the book. Mm-hmm. Basically, I mean, without even really realizing it, I think I played right into the name of the book. Yeah, I think you did. And like your fellow radio veteran, Brian Noonan, talking about just waking up on top of a Domino's pizza box with regret. Like he was going through a little bit of therapy there. That was good stuff. <laughs> He was. And as far as foodies go, you've got Jim Graziano. Uh, oh, my gosh, that guy. Fantastic. From J.P. Graziano's. The finest sub shop in the land. Period. Uh, and he said it. Pizza is a perfect way to taste real Chicago. That's true. That's true. I mean, it, is, that, I mean it's, it really is. It's ever, like, whatever you love about pizza, I love what you love, even if it's not what I prefer. Like, Pizza for Everyone was just a catchier title than Be Nice to Everyone, You Bastards. Exactly. But, you know, if we have a volume two, maybe that's the subtitle. Uh, going back to Peter Sagal, I, I wrote down this quote because I thought it was fantastic. Again, his Oh, my mission, God, that thing is just one big quote farm. It totally is. Like, that's yeah, the dude went to Harvard, and he doesn't, like, you could totally pull it out of there. Like, oh, this is like, I get, I get why the Ivy League education costs that much. So, again, his mission to end 
deep dish. <laughs> Just please don't eat deep dish. Or if you do, then quickly go see Second City, go to the top of the Sears Tower or whatever you people call it now, and then get back on the road because clearly you don't belong in Chicago. You wouldn't appreciate it. Oh my God. And you know, like, that was the closest. I'm a big Frasier fan. And Dr. Fraser Crane isn't real, so I couldn't ask him to contribute an essay. So we have the next best thing That's here. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, also, there's. I do like how he's crapping on the Second City. I'm like, that thing's like the comedy incubator for the nation. What do you? What do we, you hate? Fun. That's right. Um, there's a piece in there about pairing pizza and beer. Yes, yeah, Shanna Salarte, one of the most creative beer writers and like food like she ties everything together about beer in a way that never makes you feel like you're being talked down to you know like i know i know you're not a, a beer a big beer guy but you get you know you know how well beer compared, people to, talk compared about, to you john carruthers no one's a big beer I'm guy. Just saying, like you know how you beer people talk for about a beer, beer. sometimes i don't like craft beer a lot of times they're talking about i don't like a specific attitude and she doesn't have any of that and she speaks to beer better than anyone and like man what's more What's more beer than pizza in terms of like what we're just experiencing sensorily? Um, your life partner Jesse Valenciana mm-hmm. contributes to the book Mexican Pizza. Yeah, and that was right. He wrote that right after Taco Bell took it off the menu, and I feel like I feel like he's having a part in healing the nation here. <laughs> he is. It came down to him yeah. to, to pull it all together. Uh, also, I miss Taco in a Bag. Oh, so much. I, on Lincoln Avenue. Uh, actually, not far from this redacted location. Oh, I used to walk there from redacted. Mm-hmm. But Pat, competitive food eater, taco in a bag guy, contributes pizza in a bag. That's so good, too. I used to get that all the time. I was so excited because, like, that guy hates writing recipes so much. And he did it for me. And I'm like, I appreciate that. Like, when I say people gave their time and effort, I don't mean that there was just like a t- they tossed off whatever they had. Like, people created original things or went outside of their comfort zone and did it. And it is nice to have a little piece of taco in a bag in there because this was it was not closed when he started writing mm-hmm. it. So it's like you got a little bit of, you know, it's like the Jurassic Park mosquito. Like, we got this in amber, and <laughs> we just got to not bring it back to life to eat us. See, and taco in a bag, just the concept, pizza in a bag, that's food for us. That that's that's work. That's a working class way to describe it. If we were ordering this on Randolph Street, it would be a deconstructed taco or a deconstructed pizza. I am telling you, I and I have I have contended this for years. If Pat would have cut the portion to one thirty fifth the size, <laughs> laid it out on a flat porcelain plate designed by a crucial detail, and just built those same flavors and textures, do would have a Michelin star by now. Okay, so we agree. He's Come a flavor on. genius. I, again, we miss the place, but you can make your own pizza in a bag. Uh, this book, let's talk about, I, I think the writing's great. The contributors are fantastic. The recipes uh, are all things I want to try. Let's talk about the graphic design. I, I don't think this book could be what it is without the the way it's been put together, the, the artistic vision behind it. Oh, no, this is Zach Sherwood, old colleague of mine. Design, one person designed this entire thing outside of the credited art pieces, which we were like contributions yeah. still laid out by him. Um, this, without Zach Sherwood, the greatest church cookbook pizza designer in the history of Chicago. Oh, clearly. Uh, without him, this thing is just a very dry annual company report. He took it. And really got what we were going for in terms of the, the church cookbook ethos. He dove deep into archives, and he made something that is very much present in graphic design and very much the past. And, like, I could not have, when we were planning this, envisioned it turning out as amazing as this. Oh, and this is one of my favorite pieces. The So Mike Sula, A Flavor of Danger, the Deep Fried Pizza Balls. He made this look like a 70s paranoid thriller movie poster from the font yes. to, like, the yes. simple graphic. Like, it is crazy like that's what good design does it really just brings you to a place that you didn't even consider and like then afterwards you can't imagine what it would have looked like without that design here's john Scholl's piece deep dish that made chicago was one of the first pieces he designed and that's when we were like oh this thing is, this thing's gonna be really cool well and this is the same guy who designed the crust fund logo right no the crust fund logo designed by anthony hall uh okay. out of portage park he sells uh shirts, underpants, what have you, under the name Hairbrand, and he is also a great, he's a great artist, Zach's a graphic designer, um, honestly, if anyone's falling down on the job as part of the CrossFund organization, it's me, but <laughs> someone's got to make the pizza. Someone's got to make the pizza. Okay, so John Carruthers of CrossFund Pizza, 
The Kickstarter goes until the first week of August, right? Sounds right. Yeah. Uh, and again, if you contribute, I think it's like 35 bucks to get... Am I, am I just pulling these numbers out of my... Yeah, 35 to get it locally, 40 to get it mailed, and Which then you don't want people to do. Eh, I have completely fallen down. Well, in truth, we've had a lot. We've had a lot of very generous people who want it mailed. And you know what? I'm just gonna have a little mailing party. Call my dad over. Call my sister over. Open a few beers, and we're just gonna like, we're just gonna have a USPS day. Well, I, I think the name of that reward is the Oh God, you're really gonna make me mail this or something yeah, like sounds that. Sounds right. Yeah, I I'm love considering that. a new tier. If anyone abroad wants it, and if I can figure out the shipping prices, study abroad. Like if you want it, and you're like in the UK or something. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so again, if you go to the Kickstarter right now, it's Pizza for Everyone is the book. You can get a copy of the book, which I, honestly, it's a great read. It, it's not re not just recipes. It's not just essays. It's everything. It's everything about pizza, and it is about the most local thing you'll read. I, I think we all love reading, hearing about, watching things about the city. We love local. I think that's why I was, you know, it's like over 500% funded, and I wasn't expecting that because I'm like, oh, other people want to have the Chicago vibe. Like That's it. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> people always assume we're talking to ourselves here. And, uh, oh, I get it. Apparently talking to a few other people. Well, and it's, it's local without being smarmy local. You're not talking about the bean or <laughs> Wrigley Field. I, I have this conversation with other broadcasters all the time. You always know when someone comes from out of the market and is suddenly on the radio because it's like hey where do you guys go for pizza so i was walking by the bean i couldn't believe it we were drinking after going to the game at wrigley we sat in the bleachers it you just know when it's like jive this yeah. is authentic chicago i call right? that i call that the parachute job when it's like someone's parachuting in <laughs> that's it kind of yeah. like the great muppet caper uh when they kick kermit gonzo and fozzy out of the airplane at the beginning <laughs> yeah. it's exactly that and usually it's on the behest of a uh Internet media site, where that, we will not name. That movie, by the way, really was the beginning of the end for the franchise, because after that, we got Muppets in Space. Was that before? That was before Muppet Treasure Island? Mm, maybe. maybe you, might, you might be right. In any event. Garth anyway, by the time it was Treasure Island, like I was seeing that movie for a buck fifty at the second run three weeks later, and I'm like, oh. Well, the, the point is, John Carruthers, the most fun pizza. Gonzo can't carry a movie. No. That, that was such a mistake. He can just, no. The only thing he carries that chicken, and there's weird stuff going on there's there. There's weird stuff going on there. Again, the point is this. Kickstarter. Oh, yeah. Pizza for everyone. John Carruthers, Crust Fun Pizza. Uh, get this book. It, it is it is highly readable. It is very Chicago. It's stuff that you can replicate and enjoy at home. Uh, some funny stuff in there. Some honest, authentic stuff. I, I love it. You can get it, and in the process, support local charities. Support the community. Which is which is the whole motivation behind Crest One Pizza? Correct. And I mean, just as an endorsement, I should be sick of it by now, and I'm still reading it for fun. <laughs> All right, John Carruthers, Crest One Pizza. The book is fantastic. Get it? It's pizza for everyone. And uh, thank you for watching, and thank you for listening. <laughs>